The first Christmas card was commissioned in 1843 by one Henry Cole and designed by John Colcott Horsley. It was an instant success with its delightful message and charming illustration of a Victorian family enjoying Christmas while a small child gets quietly trashed in the foreground. It was swiftly followed by a number of imitators and things... How can I put this? Um, kind of lost their way. Now, obviously, some of it's just us putting our cynical modern interpretation on things. Like this one, which looks to us uncannily like Father Christmas standing motionless at the window, staring in while the small children wonder when he's leaving. He's been standing there for like six hours now. But Victorians would probably have seen it as the children hiding in gleeful anticipation as jolly old Saint Nick makes his way to their house. Or this one, where Santa leaves toys on a child's pillow, which to us in a post-Operation Yew Tree world looks quite sinister. Or this one, where Father Christmas is... is... Ki kidnapping... Ki kidnapping a child. Uh... I mean, Christmas traditions change with cultures. Uh, for instance, in parts of Northern Europe, uh, Santa is accompanied by this demonic figure, the Krampus. It's pretty creepy to us in Britain and America, but it's a venerable tradition there, and who are we to impose our culture on others? My point is, values change. A card like uh, like this, for instance, uh, w would not ha have been seen as offensive to the Victorians. A and and this... Uh, OK, let, let's, let's move on. Animals seem to have been a major theme of Christmas cards, and not just your reindeer and robins either. This one appears to have been designed for Australians by an artist who knew nothing about Australia beyond kangaroos and gold mining. Here we see a child startled by a hungry goat, and here we see another reduced to pants-wetting terror by the unexpected appearance of an ostrich. Here, a Portuguese man-o'-war has appeared in the air above a child's head, presumably with the intention of entangling the bairn in its stinging tentacles and devouring him alive in a kind of Lovecraftian body-horror nightmare scenario. But that's just a guess. Personally, my favourite intrusive animals card is this one where an elephant ruins a man's Christmas letter. I just love the expression of annoyance on the man's face, like, Egad, not again! Had I known I was cursed to have my every epistle besmirched by elephantine Gallimalfrey, I should never have moved to Clerkenwell. Now this one is just an unfortunate artist's quirk. It's by Louis Wayne, whose style was cartoon cats with big eyes. So this is uh, just Jack and the Beanstalk, but with cats. It's quite adorable, really, once you get over the art style. And here's another one where a bunch of cats wait to beat someone to death. They're more subtle than this snow Vulcan, goblin, who is clearly visible from some distance to the passing gent, but he seems unperturbed. Maybe he's doing it deliberately, taunting the man to reduce him to a nervous wreck before he delivers the final merciful blow. At least he looks less malicious than this snowman, who is no doubt making some satanic bargain with the child at the bottom of the card there. Or this one, which lurches after the horrified children with zombie-like gait. It's not fast, but it is inevitable. This one has been confronted with its own mortality as the Thor arrives. And this one apparently carries a woman in a gaping hole in its torso. Or in my interpretation, the woman is simply the snowman's new form, enabling it to go among the humans in disguise. The only giveaway being a strange aversion to sitting by the fireside. Maybe the woman is a human it has consumed. Hmm. Maybe this card here is some sort of folkloric warning, or maybe the Knight's King has some skeletons in his closet. For some reason, frogs show up a lot, ice skating, pipe smoking, dancing with stag beetles, or stabbing each other. Actually, the uh, stabbing shows up more than once. Some of the recurring themes are quite baffling. I've come across a couple of an animal painting a portrait of another animal. I don't really get the Christmas aspects of this. Or um, of the mouse riding the lobster. Or the cat and the owl selling dead mice. The fish waiting for their Christmas feast. Well, 
Oh, OK, that's strange, but at least it has a Christmassy theme. Uh, maybe it takes place in the same anthropomorphic fish universe as this card with the uh, the fish selling fish. Or this one with the oysters who... Um, no, no, no idea. Uh, the oysters uh, seem quite upset, but to be honest, I, I don't know what an oyster would get upset about. Uh, being eaten? But I don't think they can, like, conceptualise that in the, in their little oyster brains, so... Who knows? Maybe I'm overthinking this. If animals aren't to your taste, uh, plants crop up now and again. Like these flowers with human heads in a kind of early version of the Little Shop of Horrors, or... or oh no. Oh no, what's what's that? It, 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 is that a potato? I don't like it. No, no, make them go away! No, oh, Mummy, I don't like them! <sighs> All right, let's talk about something more charming. Uh, revenge, say. Like these mice apparently about to consume the body of a vanquished cat, which presumably has in the past eaten many of their fellows, creating a kind of bizarre indirect cannibalism, which... No, not you. Bad, racist card. Um, the concept of the tables being turned crops up more than once, like this one where some turkeys, a pork chop and a pudding, decide to roast a man alive. I'm kind of curious as to the backstory here. Fan fiction writers, get on it. Actually, there's a whole array of sinister puddings, which is not a sentence I have ever spoken before, and I hope will never have the occasion to speak ever again. Disturbing plum duffs appear very regularly in Victorian Christmas cards. This one is joined by the heads of a pig and a goose that have been stitched onto headless human bodies and animated using either forbidden science or, more likely, dark magic. This one burns with unholy fire. If you can't find a way to get a creepy face on your puddin', then perhaps throw in a clown or two. This jester is good, but not quite as horrifying as it could be, especially given that the man there is helpless and otherwise alone. Ah, now, this is more like it. A flaming anthropomorphic pudding held aloft by a weird clown guy. Look at the misshapen body, the benevolent smile. You can practically smell the brandy and brimstone. If these two show up to your Christmas gathering, you truly know Christ has abandoned you. Obviously, satanic incursions weren't the only misfortunes that could befall you at Christmas, and the card makers had you covered. For instance, this one that enables you to moan about how you don't have any money. And if you yourself were doing all right, there were cards to remind you of the less fortunate, usually with a dead bird. It's all very symbolic. Wait a second. What if these birds aren't dead? What if they're dead drunk? Ah. Oh yeah, you can't trust these birds for a second. Look at these sinister lads. This torch-wielding mob is about to dispense some intra-community justice, if this hare doesn't get to them first. Oh, come on, these are getting silly. Are there no non-creepy cards? We've got the man being attacked by a bear. We've got the chicken people. We've got the children riding bats. The giant blowfly. Well, there's this one, I guess, with the guy emptying a jug of what I hope is water onto the carolers below. And um, and here's a man who's fallen over. That's sort of funny, I suppose. Um, what happened to the old Victorian sentimentality, though? Oh, here we go. Here's a love poem. <clears throat> the night is dark, and my messenger moth has the weight of my love to bear. To fly in the light of my laughing eyes, and lay down my burden there. The sun shall arise to gild the snow that hushes each human tread. My love shall wait thy door, sweetheart, where my messenger moth lies dead. Oh, that's it, I give up. Have a great Christmas, everybody, and try not to get stabbed by frogs, eaten by turkeys, stung by jellyfish, boiled alive, or whatever.